Okay, I'm starting in on kind of a, a, a low side angle of this painting because it is a unique piece in that different angles and, uh, and lightings give it a totally different mood and, and color scheme, more so than most pieces even, which I think really kind of went with what I was going for as this uh, piece is called Quarantine. It's my latest picture and obviously a direct reflection of the sad times that we're in and scary times as well. And, um, and I wanted it to sort of resonate with many different audiences because everyone has different uh, situations and um, and so I wanted it you know it to be relatable and whether it's someone that's sick and is just screaming because they're sad and they're worried or someone that is so worried about getting sick <laughs> that the paranoia is taken over or just simply cabin fever for being inside uh, it, I think it reflects all those emotions and I like that the different angles also show different uh, kind of elements to the picture that kind of go along with that same uh, that same theme. Um, I used uh, a lot of bright colors uh, and focusing in on the mouth. I used a little bit of glitter throughout uh, the mouth and the painting. I wanted it to have kind of a manic, raw, frustrated texture, but I still wanted it to be pretty, so I thought adding a little glitter would would do the trick on that. Um, and I used, like I said, a lot of colors. I wanted it to feel very stressed, very visceral, and um, and I wanted to sort of give it that uh, frenzied vibe. Hello, my name is Wendy Keeney Kennecutt, retired chemistry prof from Texas A&M University and a watercolorist. I am in my art studio that doubles for classroom space for the Brazos watercolor retreats. I want to chat about a watercolor I did last summer called China's Future from Past Reflections. It was a finalist for the Woodlands High School Art Trust. I took the reference photo during our trip to China last year, and he was such a sweet boy. So I took the photo, but then it was only later I realized that his jacket was red, white, and blue, and it had the word hope on it. Then I saw the reflection of an old woman in the glass, and I thought, what a great metaphor for the new China. In springtime, the Indian paintbrush is commonly seen along Texas highways and in fields throughout the state. Most commonly, it's a bright red, but occasionally a plant with a color variation is seen among the red flowers. That's what I saw that day when I was out shooting pictures of wildflowers. There was this pale bloom that just stood out among all the bright red. I find that there's a simple beauty in white flowers, and often white is associated with true love, with innocence, humility, and reverence. White flowers evoke a sense of hope in me. And in the spring of 2020, the year of COVID-19 pandemic, I have hope for the resilience of mankind. And so the title of this work, Hope Springs Eternal, it's kind of a combination of the hope that I'm feeling right now and the fact that it's springtime. This is what is often called photo art. It begins with an original photograph and then using mostly Photoshop and sometimes some other software tools, various textures and effects are overlaid on top of the photo to make the work of art.
Hi, my name is Jay Sean with Metal Fantasies and a member of the Brazos Valley Art League. Today I'd like to show you one of the many wind chimes I've created. This particular wind chime was created for our meditation garden at our home. It's entitled Bell of Fire. This bell is made up of four sides, one oxygen tank, eighth inch steel. The sound that these bells emit is reminiscent to an old church bell. It takes very, very little breeze for them to bring the sound to life. Have a listen. So if you'd like one of these wind chimes or any other type of metal sculpture for your home or business, contact the Brazos Valley Art League for my information. Thank you. I'm Chris Rogers, and I love painting murals like the one you see here on my studio wall. But mostly I enjoy creating acrylic abstract paintings like this one. And watercolor portraits. This is my granddaughter Sydney at various ages. Early on I experimented combining realism with abstract for a portrait of the singer Leon Redbone. That was fun. So when legendary blues singer B.B. King died in 2015, I decided to do it again, only much larger. It didn't work out too well at first. With a drawing on watercolor paper, I took care to protect the highlights with masking fluid, to, and then I flowed on a wash of Prussian blue to create depth followed by washes of quinacridone red, cobalt turquoise, and nickel azo gold. Working on 60 pound paper seemed a good idea at the time, but once I removed the mask and started adding detail, the image fuzzed out to yuck. I had to start all over. This time I used 30 pound arches, my favorite paper for portraits, and it turned out fine. I wanted to finish on canvas because I don't like dealing with frames. So this one is 30 by 40 inches. I use lots of textures and images from King's Beale Street Blues Club in Memphis. After applying the portrait to the background with an acrylic medium, I finished with an archival varnish. And since King named his guitar Lucille, I titled the painting A Conversation with Lucille. Okay, I kind of like to start off by showing these two paintings together because to me they're so connected. They have such a similar theme. One inspired the other and uh, I just think they look really cool together. Um, this one is titled Masquerade and this was uh, the one I painted first. It obviously is inspired by New Orleans as a lot of my art is. I grew up going there and always so drawn to the local artists and flavor and rich history. Um, and so this was painted during Mardi Gras season. I, I didn't really know where it was going. I started with the mouth. I wanted something that was sort of a combination between comical and creepy. And I felt like the mouth really led me in that direction. And then the lace mask just kind of came to be. Uh, and it's also something a little different for me. Um, I have a lot of my paintings have a lot more color to it. And this was uh, a bit austere and I kind of enjoyed playing around with more black and white uh, setting and kind of really focusing on in on that uh, pop of color in the mouth and a little bit in the eyes, but more um, the mouth and kept the background, like I said, more kind of severe. Um, so obviously that painting 
gave me inspiration for my second one because I enjoyed doing it so much. It was, like I said, a departure for me. I tried to kind of keep with the black and white setting, but this one gave way to more color. Um, I like that it has two different sides to the face, a black and the white side, and then a, uh, a colorful one. And uh, also this one, uh, you kind of see a duplicitous nature, a sort of a human type face over here. And then with the mouth and the eyes over here, you get a, a feline look. Um, and it kind of went with the whole Mardi Gras season as well. Um, and yeah, once again, just focusing in on that mouth. You know, people always say that eyes are the windows to the soul, but for me, it's something about the mouth that really kind of dictates the picture and the mood and where it's gonna go. Okay, this fella right here is named Leonard. Um, I don't have any deep or sentimental connection to the name Leonard. I just thought it looked like a Leonard when I finished. <laughs> I didn't know if it was male or female exactly. It was a little androgynous that I felt like it looked a little bit more masculine, so I went with Leonard. Uh, and uh, Leonard's just kind of having a bad day. He has <laughs> chapped lips. Uh, I actually, this piece was a lot of fun because I had no idea where I was going with it. Uh, I just sort of played around with it and um, I was having a headache and maybe I became inspired with the whole headache because it kind of looks like he's having a migraine or <laughs> then I look at it and I kind of think maybe that was subconsciously what was in my mind uh, and somehow an urban kind of dilapidated wall came into being, uh, but it was a lot of fun because I didn't know where it was going and I ended up uh, enjoying it and uh, then somehow a cigarette fell out of his mouth and voila Leonard came to be um, but I relied a lot on what was interesting about this piece though is that all of my pieces are mixed media but I relied a lot on uh, or, or I'll say I relied evenly on pastels as much as I did acrylic usually I rely more on the paint and uh, and I kind of wanted a very gritty very urban feel to it and uh, and that's what I got and um, and if you look closely, like into the mouth, it's really kind of cool, the smoke and and the colors of the eyes and how it picks up the gold. Um, yeah, so Leonard's having a bad day and he's sad, but it was actually a lot of fun to create. Okay, this piece is called Clown and Kalia because it is a very melancholy clown, obviously. Um, she's sad and I think that's sort of what's kind of drew me to creating this piece. Uh, once again, it was sort of around that Mardi Gras uh, carnival time and I was uh, kind of drawn to that whole idea but I'm also drawn to the juxtaposition of uh, of a sad clown because clowns are supposed to be happy and this one's so sad and she's uh, she's very colorful I enjoyed I really enjoyed using the metallics I really have um, the light kind of right on it because it, it really brings out the pretty gold and it glistens and sort of also has um, a little bit of an older feel to it, uh, kind of Venetian maybe, um, or at least that's kind of, I guess, what I was inspired by, like a, a Venetian carnival. Uh, and uh, once again, sort of interesting eyes and mouth and the colors. I just really enjoyed the colors of this one uh, and how it all just kind of glistens and shines and um, and I think that was uh, kind of the coolest part about this piece. This painting is called Break On Through to the Other Side. Obviously a borrowed title from a door song, but nonetheless applicable. It just kind of spoke to me and uh, grabbed my attention after I finished the painting. Uh, it's about two hands uh, trying to connect and not able to do so. Um, there's a barrier, there's uh, an obstacle, and, uh, and the woman feels trapped in sort of this industrial type wall and she's crying and she's uh and she's wanting these uh these hands to connect and she's wanting to feel that unity that she's lacking sort of a testament um of the time that we're in and uh sort of how we all feel right now but it also shows that uh that each wall is, is each side is different and one side is very colorful with pops of metallic as you can see here and uh and the hand is very inviting and feminine and dainty and it's just colorful and full of promise and that's the breakthrough that we want this side uh the hand is is different it's um even though it's masculine and powerful it's sort of 
uh, all with the same colors. It's, it's not, other than a few pops of colors on this side, it's very binary, it's black, white, and gray, very muted, and a little bit sad, and uh, and just wanting these two sides to sort of connect. But once again, the, the breakthrough is sort of what we're hoping for. And, uh, and uh, this piece, once again, uh, was a mixed media piece like all of the rest, and I used uh, pastels very heavy on um, in the beginning to kind of create this sort of gritty industrialized backdrop, and then uh, added the pastels to sort of give each side a personality and a, a flavor and a contrast. I am Wendy Keeney Kennicutt and a local watercolorist. Inspiration can come from anywhere. I am a member of the Facebook group, Texas Birds and Butterflies. Last summer, a woman posted this incredible photo of a flying egret that she took from her boat at Cattle Lake in East Texas. I was immediately struck by its beauty and luckily the photographer gave me full permission to paint it. I decided to use a half sheet of rough arches paper from my mom's supply to help give it more texture. I started by masking out the bird and then worked wet on wet for the water and the floating vegetation, adding detail later. I really liked how the painting, which I call Escape from Caddo Lake, evolved into this interesting cross between realism and somewhat abstract, using hard and soft edges throughout. However, the photo was the real inspiration. I didn't change the composition much at all. Kudos to the photographer. I wanna tell you about my first full sheet watercolor that I did last spring. It's called The Dark Hedges. It is a beech tree line drive in Northern Ireland made famous by the series Game of Thrones. I took the reference photo during a photographic tour of Ireland back in 2016. And uh, originally the picture I took was very green. So I changed the colors to what you see now and cropped it slightly so that I could have a better composition. I put a grid on the reference and slowly painted it square by square, inch by inch and so that I wouldn't be overwhelmed by all the detail. I largely use the dry on dry technique, so to give the branches check texture and leave the white of the paper. I did use masking fluid for the flowers and the bushes you see in the foreground and uh, the small figure that you see in the picture is my husband, he wanted to be included. And he wasn't in the original, so I just painted him in. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the colors that I used. I like using a limited palette so that all the colors work together, and I think it did that. Hope you like it. I have been wanting to do an intricate watercolor using reflection and refraction since studying the work of Soon E. Warren. I arranged the glass beads in a glass dish on a large mirror, took lots of photos with and without flash, and decided on this arrangement. I applied a grid and painted it very slowly, as I always do. I studied each small part separately, then did the masking on the small part, and then painted it almost to the finishing point, and then moved on to the next section. So this painting is actually the melding of many small paintings. I get easily overwhelmed, and so taking a painting one step at a time, especially with this much detail, um, works for me. The air quote black background was added afterwards and isn't really black at all, of course. It was inspired by her mixture um, she uses indigo, sepia, and permanent alizarin, crimson. I probably added some purple, some ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna. Should have written it down, but didn't, of course. 
The mirrored reflection ended up being too bright, and so I painted a diluted wash over it to calm it down and make it blend in a little bit better. I originally was going to crop this photo more, but ultimately decided not to. To keep the glass from just floating in the blackness, um, you can just make out a line delineating the background from the tabletop. So please enjoy my painting. I call it Reflections on Reflections. Hi, my name is Carol Fox Hendricks. I am an inter interpreted nature photographer and photo artist. I'm here today to talk to you about my work titled Beacon from Bass Harbor Headlight. You can see it behind me. I'm kind of using a green screen technique. So if you see parts of me disappear periodically, that's what's going on. Um, <clears throat> this work, as with most all of my photo art, begins with an original photograph that I took, and then I take it into the computer and work on it using various software applications until what I see in my mind matches what I see on the computer. Oftentimes that involves going back and forth between one software application or another, maybe, you know, could be even over a dozen times doing different things such as, you know, the normal photography things like color balance, a white balance, contrast, saturation, those kinds of things. But in addition, then I add elements such as textures, do dodging and burning of specific areas, add texture overlays onto one or two little pieces of an image to create the final effect. This particular work has maybe about 80 hours in, of work into it. So it's a meticulous kind of operation. And, you know, at some point you have to say, yep, this is what I, this is what I see. And I think with all artists, we kind of get to that point, right? So the day that I visited Bass Harbor was overcast, misty, cloudy, and we didn't even know if the boat was going to be able to go out. But we did get out, and so the, I knew that with the overcast, overcast skies, I was not going to be able to get a really great landscape shot. Because in my mind, you have to have awesome skies unless you can pretty much crop the skies out. So I decided to shoot with this type of project in mind, knowing that I was going to come back and overlay textures and, and elements to enhance the photo and in fact the cloudy overcast sky really is the perfect background for this. So I hope that you like the final result. You can kind of see it behind me and if you want to see more of my work you can visit my website at carolfoxhenricks.com. This is my work I have titled Filled with Emptiness. I was struck by the overall emptiness of the scene when I took the original photo. And I'm thinking emptiness. To me, emptiness means nothingness, no filling, no contents. I mean, nothing inside. There's nothing inside the boat. There's nothing inside the lobster traps. But there's a certain sort of simplicity when you think about it. There's no clutter. There's no nonsense. There's nothing on the horizon, nothing to interfere with this simple scene. And at the same time, I was struck by the potential, the potential for a bountiful lobster harvest next season. When you take a look at the reference photo that I used, or the original photo that I used as the basis for this, you can see that I eliminated several objects from the frame and I overlaid several texture layers, did some dodging and burning, um, adjusted shadows in certain areas, and one of the last things I did was to add just a little hint of a horizon to give you a feel for where you are, um, that you're not really just in the middle of the ocean somewhere. And then 
I desaturated the image a bit just to give it a little bit of a monochromatic look, although there is some hints of color in different places. To me, this feels like one of the old Dutch masters works, which I, I truly admire. And right now, this is one of my favorites.